It is our season to dominate. It is our season to reintroduce ourselves to the world. It is our season. If the world thought they knew us, they don't know us. If they think our history has been written and it's the end, it's not the end. God is just beginning in my life. I'm about to dominate. Hallelujah. 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 I was telling the young people yesterday that if it is not difficult, it's not worth to be done by you. Let me tell you something that everybody that was written, that was recorded in the history books is because they conquered something that was greater than them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is a season that the generation of 2021 are beginning to write, to rewrite the history. And our children's children, our grand, great, great, grandchildren will read it in, in, in 2040. They will read it in 2055 that my grandmother, there was COVID-19, but she stood and dominated. She stood and she ruled and she never succumbed to what was happening. You are not born to be the tail. You are born to be the head. Hallelujah. Shake your neighbor to the neighbor. I'm the head. I'm not the tail. Hallelujah. Come and tell the neighbor, the neighbor. That's why when things come, they begin to attack me because I'm the head. I'm the head. I am the head. Or do I have heads in this place? I'm the head. Hallelujah. No, 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 no. Don't look at things that are happening in me and you think it's a sign of weakness. It's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign that I'm a pioneer. It's a sign that I am somebody to be recognized by the devil. Because the devil does not attack anything that is not troubling him. Let me tell you something. If you are living an attack-free life, please check how you are attacking the devil. But I'm the head, and I'm born to rule, and I'm born to dominate in Jesus' name. Take your seats in the name of the Lord. Ooh. Hallelujah. My God. This morning we finish up the book of Genesis, and uh, Lord help us in the next few minutes that left for us um, that we be able to break down everything um, and that God wants us to break down this morning uh, in the name of the Lord hallelujah Genesis 1 28 Genesis 1 and verse number 28 blessed be God amplified mama Genesis 1 and 28 Amplified version, verse 28. Uh -huh. And God blessed them, yep. granting them certain authority, yeah. and said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth, and subjugate it, putting it under your power, and rule over, dominate the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and everything, every living thing that moves upon the earth. And let's go to chapter 2. Chapter 2. And uh, let's go to verse number 19. 18 and 19. Yeah. Chapter 2. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Amplified. 18 on Amplified Version, chapter 2 of Genesis. Now the Lord God said, It is not good, beneficial for, him, for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper, one who balances him, a counterpart who is suitable and complementary for him. Yeah. So the Lord God formed out of the ground every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam for Adam to, to, Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called a living creature, that was its name. Verse 20. And the man gave names to all livestock to, and to all the birds of the air 
and to every animal of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper that was suitable, a companion for him. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. Somebody shout amen. Well, we, we are still in the series. I think today is chapter 8. The power of the power of connection. Somebody said the power of connection. Some said the power of connection. Power of connection. Now, this morning, uh, we're going to branch out a little bit, but we are still under the same series, the power of connection. Amen? Can I have a couple? Couple. Husband and wife. If, if there's a couple here, otherwise I will create my own couple. Husband and wife. <laughs> People have been desiring things. You see it when they seize the opportunity. See, the brother has been trying to say a word. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's appreciate this couple in the name of the Lord. Now, these two are a couple, right? You can't do social distancing. You came from the same bed, same house. So uh, you must be close to one another. Hallelujah. So, so it says, scripture says the two shall no longer be two, but they will become, hallelujah, they'll become one. The two of them will become one, become one, become one. <laughs> right. So they'll become one. So what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Speak after me and say what God has joined together. Let no man put asunder. Now watch this. What it means, no man has the authority, no man has the power to separate that which God has joined together. Not only man, but also no demon, no devil is allowed to separate what God has packaged. Some of you, you should pick me up already. What God has put together, no man is allowed to separate. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, we've been teaching on this. Genesis 1 and 26, you will see right there. Uh, um, they will show it on the screen, but we won't read it. Scripture says, God said, he said to God the Father, I mean, to God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, let us create men in our own, in our own, and we will give him, hello? Three things that God has packaged in a man. He said, this man must have our image. Hallelujah. Which therefore means whether you are black, dark, whether you are, you are dark green, whether you are pink, you are sweet pink or whatsoever, you have got the image of God inside of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even if they have dumped you and they said you are not so beautiful. No, you are not so beautiful to them because they have never seen a creature like you. And anything that is foreign to somebody's eye, because they have never seen it for a long time, they can't see the beauty in it. Hello, somebody. Therefore, do not listen to what they are saying. They are only saying it because they have never seen somebody like you. In you, there is an image of God that has been packaged. Number two, there is the likeness of God that has been put in you. Number three, there is the dominion, the authority. Hallelujah. The amplified version in verse number 28, he, we talked about this last week. It says, he grant them certain authority. Hallelujah. He grant, who was he granting? He was granting men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you must understand that chapter 1 of Genesis, it is God speaking the creation. Chapter 2 comes and God is beginning to form what he has created. Hello somebody. That's why when he released the blessing on verse number 28, he was releasing the blessing upon a man and a woman. He was not blessed. That's why he says, and God blessed them. He did not bless him. When he gave authority, he gave authority to them. Not to him. Hallelujah, somebody. 
Hallelujah, somebody. Therefore, he gave them dominion. So, upon men, there is likeness, there is image, and there is dominion. Three things. And we talked about this a few weeks ago, where we said, God has packaged it together. Hello? God did not release the blessing until they came together. Oh, let me teach this thing, God. The God did not release a blessing. He waited for the three to come together and he released the blessing. Understand this, child of God, that God does not release the blessing where there is disorder. God does not release the blessing where there is no agreement. God does not release the blessing where there is no union. God does not release the blessing where there is no unity. That's why scripture says in the book of Matthew, I think it's Matthew chapter 18, scripture says, when two agree on earth, on anything, hallelujah, scripture says, they, they must not start by praying, they must start by agreeing. When they have agreed, they don't agree in heaven, hear me, child of God. They agree on earth, right here where there are snakes and scorpions, but they must agree right here where there's persecution, but they must agree right here where there are sicknesses. Some of the sicknesses are not getting healed, but in the midst of the turmoil and the troubles, God says the true must agree. Are you hearing me? Now, scripture says, when they agree, whatsoever they ask the Lord will grant them amen this must tell us I taught this at the wedding this must tell us that God honors the power of agreement that's what I'm going to teach this morning watch this now when the two of them are one how much is this 20 bucks right who wants this anyone who wants it must come and take it Hey, Papa. Hey, Namfaz. Hey, hey. You. No, it's fine. Chill. Ah, no, no. I did not agree with you. I don't agree with you. This stranger land, I got it. Who gave it to me last week? Chaluku gave it to me. I got it from Irene or something. I, I, I've kept it in my car. It, it was on the side of my car. I kept it there because I thought I was going to use it last week. I kept it there. Hello? And, and, and me keeping it there, and I, I only took it out today. But you must understand something. <laughs> Ever since it was there the whole week, I only took it out today. When I go to the shop and I want to buy, they don't ask the 20 rand where it was. You're not hearing me. They don't first check the history of the 20 rand. Because the history of the 20 rand does not determine its value. The history of the 20 rand does not limit its power. The history of the 20 rand does not change what the 20 rand can do. Even if it has been to a witch doctor, it still remains a 20 rand. Even if it was in a street kid, it still remains a 20 rand. Even if it bought a, a, a alcohol, it still remains a 20 rand. Now, the challenge with the church is that the church wants to first understand the history of the 20 rand before they can understand the power of the 20 rand ah uh, if you if, if you're hearing me you can give god a hand of praise for that one you see you see what is delaying the growth of the church is that you want to investigate every 20 rand When God he wants to use the 20 rand, you first want to ask, Where are we are How will you be able to understand? Even in now, as the pastor of this church, I can't understand everybody's history. As much as I don't know their purpose, only God knows them. Listen to me. You ask yourself, Pastor, what I say? Understand this. There are certain things. That belong to God alone. Two things that belong to God. Somebody shall say two things. Some said two things. It is the future and the history. It is not for you to know. Hello, somebody. Even if we welcome people today as members of the church, 
and you saw this person yesterday doing one, two, three. Please don't come and tell us. Because, because it's, that's, it's not about me. Because child of God, when I'm busy investigating the history of the 20th and who's investigating me? Sorry, I'm getting real this morning. Hello? And that is why church cannot grow. Hallelujah, somebody. So we, if we welcome this couple, we use this couple as an example. We welcome this couple and they say they are a couple. And you know something else. Please don't come and tell us. We are welcoming what we know. Please leave us here. If God wants us to know these things, he will reveal it to us. And the challenge with knowing things is that many of the things that you want to know, you know it prematurely. Because you love to investigate. You get certain information that is correct. It's correct, but it's correct at the wrong time. And when you find it at the wrong time, you are not capacitated to deal with the information. Therefore, you end up mishandling the people. I, I, am, I, am I talking to somebody this morning? Am I talking to somebody this morning? Am I talking to somebody this morning? You end up mishandling the 20 rand because of what you know. And God wants to use people in the church. God wants to operate in people in the church. What is hindering the people? I'm talking about the people themselves now. It's because even the 20 rand does not see its value because of where it came from. It's been messed up. It's been crushed. But I can tell you right now, the value is still there. I, 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 I. It's been put together. No one can recognize it anymore. But in the midst of in recognition of people, God still recognized. Can I talk to somebody this morning? And the challenge with us is that we are busy looking down on ourselves because of what has happened in us. You've been through the fire. You've been through things. But value is still there. You've lost your parents. Yes, it's now. And you've cried. Even today you are still crying. But you crying is not a sign of weakness. The value is still there. You have lost the job, but the job is not you. You've lost the relationship, but the relationship is not you. Value is still there. I think, Jay, if I, oh my God. If I throw away it, this change event, and Mama Ayo comes, hello? And sees it. <laughs> Come on. So I threw it away. Right? And she comes. She takes it. Look at what's, what's going on. Look at what's going on. Just, just watch it. I've thrown it away. There are people that threw you away because you were irrelevant to them. There are people that threw you away because they had never understood how to use you. There are people that threw you away because they never understood your purpose. But let me tell you something. When you are at the right hands, what I have crushed, when God has picked up from the deep muddy clay, he will begin to fix it. He will begin to make the crooked road straight. He will begin to redefine purpose. He will begin to redefine vision. He will begin to redefine what he has spoken. He will begin to revive his word upon your spirit. The fact that those uh, that never knew you, those uh, that never understood your purpose, have thrown you down does not mean that you are valueless. Hey, yeah. See? Watch. Watch. When God has fixed you, those that threw you away want you back. I'm speaking prophetically upon somebody's life right now. When God has made you, when God has packaged you together, those that criticize you will begin to praise you. When God has got, when God has gotten your attention, when God has says, "Come," remember Bartimaeus. There were those that were silencing him, but the, those that were silencing him, when Jesus said, "Oh, let him come to me," the same silencers were the same ushers. 
Why? Because God has fixed it. Shake your neighbor as a neighbor. God is about to fix me. Now, hold it together. My topic this morning is connection error. Connection error. That's what we're talking about this morning. Connection. There's an error that needs to be corrected. And the error is not in the device. The error is in the connection. And the, and the problem with many of us is that we are throwing away the device. But the device can still work if only you are positioned in the right place to connect. Hallelujah, somebody. Some say connection error. Back in the days at home, Aerial outside. And then get up the roof, fix the area. And and butatakuri. You fix it, woman's and, and you are like this. But no, no, it's fine. But, but your position is not okay. But the connection is fine. You're not hearing me. Your position is not comfortable. But, 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 but your connection is okay. And, and, and the challenge with many of us is that we want connection out of comfortability. But certain connection God is bringing, God is bringing that connection out of uncomfortability. He wants to use the same uncomfortability to you to release a divine connection upon your life. So you will, you will move that area for some time until you get the connection. God, package me this morning. Now watch these two come. As long as they're together, they can be able to use these twenty rents. Hello, because they are packaged together. Amen. As long as they're together, they've got the power of the 20. Now, if they want to give the 20 rands to George, George can still accept it. Hello? Now, I want you to watch something here. When they separate, lift it up. How much is that? George, I'll get 10 rand. Now, thank you. This year and this year is just the paper. You're gonna, you're gonna hear me when I go to scripture and then I close. This is how I teach. This year it's just the paper. That is just the paper. But it was not born like that. It was not created like that. Amos chapter 3, verse 3 says, How can two walk together? unless they I, I'm not preaching about marriage this morning how can you walk with God unless you agree with God how can God use you if you, you see the requirement of being used by God is you walking in agreement with God remember the example here last week you are human, you are connected to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is connected to Jesus and Jesus is connected to God Hello? Therefore, it is important that you agree. You see, when you make decisions over your life, make sure that you balance your decision with the agreement of God. When you make the decisions over your life, make sure that you balance your decisions, your plans. That's what scripture says, to man belongs the planning. But God has the last word. God judges the motive. Before you act, no matter how perfect, no matter how error-proof the plan is, child of God, don't act on the plan where before you have balanced it with the will of God. Hello, somebody? Now, what is making us to fail? Is that we have the brown paper and it's, it's got the number 20 there but it's got no value it has the signal it has the sign that it's a 20 
but it does not have the power of the 20. Where is the power of the 20? The power of the 20 is in the brown paper and the brown paper reconciling, coming together and say we can walk in disagreement. Hey guys. Hallelujah. You're, you're, you're walking in disagreement. And what is delaying the church now is that we, there are people in this church, in the body of Christ, we are walking in disagreement with God. You are successful, but you are in disagreement with God. No, no, no. You think you are famous when you post things on social media, 100 likes in one minute. You think it's correct. Understand me, child of God, that the amount of likes that you have does not mean the correctness of God. You see, we want to judge the correctness of our walk with God in accordance with how many people are in agreement with us. Many a times when you are walking in the will of God, you've got too many oppositions than agreement. Many a times when you are walking in the will of God, you've got people that don't agree with you. That's when you know. I, 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 I challenge your calling. If your calling is being agreed upon with everybody, everybody clap hands for you. Please, child of God, you must introspect your relationships around you. Because if your relationships around you are formed by people who always say, yes, yes, you are good, you are right, you are correct, amen, amen, good, you preached well, the word was good, you were relevant, they are lying to you. Hallelujah. Ask your neighbor, neighbor how is your relationship? Watch this. Una, did you get that cell tape in the morning? No, no, watch this. This shoe here. No, I think it's still like that for some time. Go back. No. Scripture says God packaged them together. He packaged the image, the likeness, whatever, whatever, everything. Now watch it. Where we have read in chapter 2, the Bible says, and God created the animals and brought them to the man. Now watch. He brought the animals to who? Who is this man? He brought the animals to the man that he has given authority. Hello? When God was bring, oh my God, my God. God created the animals, but he did not name the animals. He brought them to man so that man must test the authority that God has given him. Hello? Let me tell you something, child of God. Don't bind any situation because certain situations God has created the God has given them and test the authority that is upon you. And when you are busy binding your testing ground, that gave them names and part of these things that men named some of them were called snakes and scripture says whatsoever name man has named so it was even today now 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 understand 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 when man was naming a lion palisa the lion was just here man had a relationship with the lion because in verse 28 and, and verse 20 verse 29 god shows us right there that this man must be responsible of all the birds the animals everything they are under his responsibility therefore you can't be responsible for something that you fear 
you can be responsible for something and you run away from it you are responsible for it because it is under your authority you are not hearing me you must understand child of god that when man was naming the animal he was naming the python when man was naming the lion when man was naming the elephant he just went to the elephant and said today you are called elephant today you are called lion when the lion was roaring, man says, keep quiet. And the lion kept quiet. Why? Because the lion recognized the authority that I am under the responsibility of this man. I am under the responsibility of this man. Hello, somebody? The snake came. And man says, today you will be called snake. And the snake answered. And the snake took on the name. And the snake agreed to the name. Why? Because the snake knew, I am under the responsibility of this man. Amen. Hallelujah. Now let's close. Let's go to New King James Version. Chapter 2. Verse number 24 and 5. Yeah, chapter 2, verse number 24 and 25. And then we jump to chapter 3, verse 1. New King James Version, verse 24 of chapter 2. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Aye, aye, aye. Okay, let's please pause there a little bit. Man shall leave his father, father and, mother. and mother. Join to his wife. Uh, talk to me. Join to his wife. They shall become one flesh. Okay. This one flesh that God is talking about. It was then in chapter 1 where scripture says he blessed them. Hello? Amen. He blessed them. He blessed them together. He formed them male. He, I mean, he created them male and female. When it came to formation, he formed men alone. Hello? Hello? Then when he formed men, out of the men, he took out that which he had already created. He took out the woman and brought the woman. And the scripture says, now the man must leave his father and mother and join to his wife. And the two shall become now, see God sometimes will amaze you. He created them male and female, but he formed only one. And look, man, listen to me. He gave the responsibility of becoming one to the man, yeah. not to the woman. Uh, hey. Scripture is not saying hate your father and mother. No, scripture is saying, chief you have the responsibility of restoring that which God has put together listen I took out of you the woman which means she's got her 20 rents I mean her half 20 hello it is your responsibility to go out and bring together so that when you are together you can then operate you can't operate without being together Are you with me? Oh, I'm, 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 I'm above your pay grade. <laughs> You're looking at me somehow. Eh? Now, now, scripture says, verse 25. And they were both naked. Okay. They and were both what? Naked. They were naked, these people. Number two. The man and his wife were not ashamed. They were naked. And not ashamed. But they were not ashamed. Mm. But they were one. They were naked. They were not ashamed. What made them not to be ashamed is because they were one. Yeah. Now let's go to verse 3. Chapter 3. Chapter 3 verse 1. New King James Version. Yes. Now the serpent was more cunning. Now the serpent. Now watch. God said, man, join to your wife. Become one. He says, it's your responsibility, man, to make sure that you must become one. one. Move with me. Move with me. Move with me. 
So this thing here, what is this thing called? What is it going to do to the 20 rands? Mend it together. It's going to mend it together. Now watch. The process of mending together is not an easy process. That's why you, young people, listen to me. You can't date today and marry tomorrow. Because you are not yet through the process of being one. Hello, somebody? Don't marry for beauty. Because beauty does not make you one. So the more, now watch. Let me lift it up. The two have become one. one. Now, verse one, scripture says, come see, the serpent. <laughs> Read, mama. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, sit here, sit here. which the Lord, had, Lord God had made. The serpent was more cunning than all the animals or all the beasts of the earth which the Lord has made. Has made. Mm. Now, understand this. God made the serpent, yeah. but it was, it, was, it, was, it was the man that named the serpent yeah. that it is called a serpent. Yeah. Hello, somebody? Hello, somebody? But scripture says this serpent was more cunning than any beast of the now, field. Now, I want you to watch it. When does the serpent appear? The serpent appears when man and a woman have become one. The serpent does not appear when there is no unity. The serpent does not appear when there is no a child of you are not hearing me this morning. When you begin to be joined in the power of God, when you begin to join with the power of God, with the power of the Lord, with the power of Jesus, the serpent always shows up. When you make a decision that from today I'm going to serve God. When you make a decision that I'm throwing away every sin. I'm throwing away every destruction. The moment you make that decision. The serpent is showing up. Let me submit to you this morning. That the attraction of the serpent. The serpent is always attracted by agreement. The serpent is always attracted by unity. Now scripture says, the serpent. Now, the serpent was more cunning. Now watch, watch. The scripture says, the serpent comes. Read my scripture there. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God give me had amplified. made. Give me amplified there. Give me amplified quickly there. Now the serpent was more crafty, crafty subtle. Crafty, crafty, crafty. Which craft? The word witchcraft comes from the word crafty. Which means the serpent was a witch. Yeah. Hey, Listen to me. The serpent comes to you. Don't look down upon it. It has got power behind it. It is more crafty. Listen, scripture says the serpent was more crafty, which means it's got the power of witchcraft behind it. Because, listen to me, wh why does it have to have power? Because what is approaching, what it is approaching now, it's approaching a place of power. Which is this power? The power of unity. What is this power? The power of package together. What is this power? The power of connection. What is this power? The power of oneness. The serpent, when it comes, it knows that I cannot fight unity when I don't have power. I cannot fight unity when I don't have information. I cannot fight unity when I don't have power of deceiving, when I don't have power of deception. I must operate in a certain power to be able to, de to degrade a certain power. Watch the serpent was more cunning. Subtle, skilled in deceit than any living there. creature. The serpent was skilled in deceit. In deceit. Someone said deceit. What fool am to? We in a scholar. We 20 degree. You fool about. 
Uchoti PhD ya udisifa watu. Hey. Watch. Get down. The same serpent is the one that Abraham, I mean Adam named. <laughs> he named the serpent. Listen to me. Listen to me. If you're taking notes, this you must write down. He named the serpent, but he did not give it its power. I want to leave you a little bit. He named the serpent, but did not give it the power. But did not give it its power. Hello? Hello? Now, scripture says, continue, Mama. Now, the serpent was more crafty subtle skilled in deceit than any living creature of the field which the lord god had made let's clap hands for the serpent the serpent is gifted in its own area allow the serpent to operate in its area now here is the problem read and the serpent satan said to the woman the serpent satan said to to the woman uh, stand up. Huh? can Three. it really be that god has said okay 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 the serpent was subtle crafty skilled and all this is deceit. skillful in deceit we are fine we will not take away from you because that's what god has given you the problem comes when the serpent gets your attention hey you and that which is supposed to be under your feet, yeah. you start conversing with it. Yes. Oh, you're not hearing me. And, and there, there, there are people in the church, your, 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 your success, your success is at a standstill. Your breakthrough is at a standstill. And what is making your breakthrough to be at a standstill is because you are beginning to converse with things that you are not supposed to converse. You are beginning to converse with things that are supposed to remain under your feet. You have actually upgraded things that belong to the earth. You have upgraded them to the table. Table is for people, not for animals. Table is for people, not for serpents. Now, the thing that you were supposed to control you are confessing with it. And my question this morning is, how is your connection? Is there no error in that connection because you are talking to the wrong people? Is there no error in that connection because you are paying attention to the wrong things? Is there no error in that connection because your focus is in the negative things? Now, Scripture says, Serpent said to the to woman. woman. Said to the, to the woman. To the woman. The woman. We don't falter the serpent there. Because the serpent, the serpent must speak. Read. Can it really be that God has said, You shall not eat from any tree of the garden? Can it really be? The message writer will say, Do I really understand it well? That God said that you must not eat. He said, Give me understanding. Because I don't understand it. Read, Mama. Read, continue. Read. Hmm. Can it Do be? I understand that God told you not to eat from any tree in the garden? Do I understand? Watch, this is a trap to disrupt the connection. Yeah. <laughs> this is a trap. The devil is going to trap you. And, and the devil is not after you. The devil is after your connection. Yeah. You know why? You know why? Watch it, watch it, watch it. When you are here together, that's why the serpent did not talk to them. God blessed them, but the serpent did not talk to them. The serpent spoke to one. You see, when, an, when, a, when a lion wants to attack a company of zebras, it, it must isolate one to move away, and they run for that one. They don't run for many, one only. Now, same applies to the serpent. The serpent comes, it does not speak to them. Because the moment the serpent speaks to them, it is tempering with power. Yeah. Not connection. Power. Because power is in togetherness. But when the serpent addresses one, and my question to you this morning is, which one are you? Between Adam and Eve. 
Where, which FM are you listening to? Who is talking to you? Who is ministering to you? Who do you spend time with? What are you meditating on? Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. You must understand, child of God, that the causes of disconnection, number one, is paying attention to external voices and, the, and, and, and not paying attention to the internal voice. Number two, I'm going to close now. Listen, listen. Number two, the, the, the causes of disconnection is the distance between the device and the source. I will show you. I want to give you these things before I forget. Number three, the causes of disconnection is a broken or a discouraged spirit. The causes of disconnection is lack of prayer. Because prayer is the communication between the device and the source. Therefore, when the device does not pray, there is no connection between the device and the source. Now watch. The serpent comes, speaks with the woman. Let's continue, Mama. Can it really be that God has said you shall not eat from, the, from any tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees I, of the garden. Now watch. Woman, you have been given authority. Serpent does not have authority. You are the one that has authority. Therefore, when serpent approaches you, he will always approach you in a question form. So that question form unlocks the power of in your mouth for you to release the power of creativity. Then the serpent can act on the power of creativity because the serpent only operates is skilled in deceit, not in power of creativity. Serpent does not have authority. Serpent does not have power over you. It is you when the serpent asks the question that you release authority and the serpent takes the same authority and uses the serpent the same authority against you. What do I mean? Do I really understand? Did God really say you must not eat? Now, two options that Eve had. Number one option is to answer. Number two option is to keep quiet. Amen? Amen? So keep quiet. Let me tell you something, child of God. It's not every situation that needs your attention. Okay, you're not hearing me. It's not every battle that you must fight. Some of the battles keep quiet and ignore them and look like you don't see them. You see, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. You see, if you were... <laughs> I'll, I'll, it's good. Going for pap smear, going for checkup full body checkup and what not and what not and what not but sometimes what you don't know won't kill you you see the problem with you is that you want to know too much and the knowing that you have is affecting your faith the knowing that you have, you see you see when a snake comes here and you bring a child a child can go to the snake because a child does not know hello you see our children today the things they fear is the things we deposited in them. Hello? Because when you've got fear of heights, your child will never do bungee jumping. Never. Listen to me. Just because when you have not tried it does not mean that it's fear upon the child. You want to do medicine? Huh? Ah, I can try up a road. But you can try up a joint because I have not even tried. No, I'm going to first year or second year. Then you go, oh, 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 I'm going to do it so I can try up. But I'm going to do it as if you are a prophet of my life. And some of you, you are standing still today because people have spoken over your life. And when they spoke, you believed it. When they spoke, you agreed that you can't do it. And listen to me. Therefore, listen. Don't come and blame God. Please, don't come and pray to God about your success. Don't come and pray to God about your future. No, God has already spoken. The plans that I have for you are plans for you to prosper. Plans for you to, to, to have a bright future. A future full with hope. He has already spoken it. It is who you listened to. That has hold you. Therefore, where is the problem here? Where do we solve the problem? At the altar or at your house? And you are coming here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
My God, my God. What is it? Because I gave you authority, I gave you image, I gave you dominion. What are you crying for? As I'm talking right now, your voice is not there. You've been praying the whole night. You are praying about things that you are supposed to command. You are praying about things that you are supposed to disconnect from. You are praying about things that you are supposed to run away from. You are praying about things. No, let's have an online prayer. Oh, I feel charged for them. For what? No, let's have an objective for what? No, I feel it by spirit. What? Listen to me. Many of us, we are praying to God about man-made problems, not devil-made problems. It's things that we made ourselves. Things that we brought upon ourselves. What God is saying this morning, the things you are praying to me about, I don't have jurisdiction to operate on earth anymore. For me to operate on earth, I must find a man. That's why even for me to die on the cross, I had to send the son in the form of a man. He, he lived for 33 years and he had to die like any other man to conquer what men did. Huh. Do you understand that sin is not a formation of the devil? Sin is not a formation of God. Sin is what man formed. God looked in, in heaven and he said, this that man is doing, I must wipe it away. He tried through the rain in the days of Noah. It didn't work. Then he had to send a son. Listen to me. Don't you ask yourself, why didn't God do Jesus? Why didn't God just say, let there be purity upon the earth? There was nothing that was going to happen. Oh, the, the earth was going to laugh at him. Uri chief, in creation, you released authority upon us. Where now you rule the earth, we rule the earth. I mean, you rule the heaven, we rule the earth. Oh, yeah. right, don't come here. That's why Luke chapter 10, verse 19 says, You shall tremble upon what? Scorpion. Upon snakes and scorpion. He says, I have given you that authority. I oh, come on, shout and say authority. Someone say authority. Someone say authority. He says, I've given it to you. It's given already. Amen. Hallelujah. It's given already. But listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. God gave you and you're still praying about it. God gave you and you're still asking him. What do you want God to do? Because you are, how can you ask for something that you already have? Do I have parents in this place? The child comes to you holding 50 rand and says, Mama, can I have 50 rand? But you already have it. What are you asking for? Hello, somebody? And this is exactly what scripture says. This man spoke. The serpent spoke. Read, Mama. And the woman, and the woman said to the serpent, uh -huh. We may eat fruit from the trees of the garden, except fruit from the tree which is in the middle the of the garden. The woman said to the serpent, We may eat. We may eat. Huh? Fruit from from every tree which is in the garden yes except for the for the fruit from the tree which is in the middle of the garden yes god said you yes. shall not eat from it nor touch it otherwise you will die what the woman was doing was releasing information that serpent did not have you see what's weighing you down right now you have given people power over you I was telling the young people yesterday it's not everything that must be posted on social media the, day we're the days we're living in right now Mama Ayo, one trimester only just one scan you post on social media a scan of a pregnancy liquid on social hey, we African children never grew like that hello somebody please listen to me church it's not everybody that likes you. You buy a car. You buy a house. You buy a shoe at small street. Everything about your life, even people that are not supposed to know, they know about it. Ah, you're not hearing me. 
Therefore, when they jealous you, they jealous you with information. Because information is power. Hello? Hello? You see? You see? They will be bewitching you. Say, ah, she will not buy a house. They are speaking out of term. They are speaking out of ignorance because they don't have information. The moment they see your dwelling in Santen, they see that you stay in Santen. When they speak negativity, they, they've got power of information. They are speaking out of information that she will not, she will not drive it for long. She will drive it for three months. And you think it's only your word that works. No, even their word also works. Because upon them, they've got authority. But the problem is, you gave them information. Now watch, the problem of information, I'm taking too long. Speak. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees of the garden, except the fruit from the tree which is in the middle of the garden. Yes. God said, you shall not eat from it nor touch it, otherwise you will die. You are even telling the devil what God has said. Hmm. Hello? God said, if you eat from it, you will? Die. Okay, no, it's fine. Eat. Aye, aye. Read, mom. But the serpent said to the woman, you certainly will now, not die. The second aye. verse starts with, but. Which means the word but changes everything that you just said right now. Yeah. The enemy is coming to use the information you give you given to him. change it around, to change your belief system. Hey. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> what, what the enemy is using against you is the same thing you gave him. Yeah. You, have, you told him, Wena. You told him everything about your family. You told him everything about your studies. Now when he comes, listen, listen, listen. But but the serpent said to the woman yeah. you certainly will not die for God knows that on the day you eat from number it, one the serpent says you will not die die uh -huh. <laughs> the serpent is right you won't die he's right God said you will die he's right the serpent said you will not die he's also right he's also right you won't die Read. For God knows that on the day you eat from it, your eyes will be opened. Yes. That is, you will have greater awareness and you will be like God, knowing the difference between good and evil. But, okay, serpent says you will be like God. But verse, 28, verse, 27, verse 26 of chapter 1 says, I'm created like God. Hmm. I'm created to reflect his image. I'm the reflection of God. But serpent says, if you eat, you will be like God. Right? Between God and the serpent, who's lying? Who will you believe? Huh? The master of deceiving. The serpent said, you'll be like God if you, if you eat. How does he know all these things? About you being like God? How does he know all these things? About you dying and whatnot? It's the same information you gave him. You gave him the information. Now, listen. He says, you will be like God. You will not die. Hello? You will not die. God knows. You're right. Please come Come, serpent. Serpent says, you will not die. Serpent says, what the serpent said was right. The serp you see, this connection allows you to be alive but not sustained. Hey. This connection allows, allows you, you to be alive, be alive but, not sustained. but not functional. Hmm. This connection allows you to still be alive. You won't die. The serpent was right. But you are not operational. You see, he was right. You won't die, but you are not sustained. Why? Because what the serpent was after was the connection. Was the disconnection. Was the separation. Hello? The serpent was right when he said, you will not die. Indeed, you are not dead. And you are beginning to be excited 
I'm not dead. Ah, okay. Let's close here in verse, in, in, in verse, in verse uh, uh, 6. Of chapter 3. Yes. Amplified version. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was delightful to look at, and a tree to be when desired. When the woman saw, listen uh -huh. to me, church. It is not the first time the woman sees the tree. Hello? It is the first time the woman sees the tree under the influence. Hey. <laughs> and my question to you is, how is the enemy influencing you? You are about to take a critical decision in your life. I, and, and, and that decision is fine. We'll accept it. It's okay. But my question is, the influence behind the decision. Influence. Now, the, the, the serpent has spoken a word over your life. That word has influenced your decision now. Now, because of the, you listen to me, influence has got power to make you to see differently. Influence has got power to dislike, to make you dislike the things you used to like before. Influence. You see, the two are married. That you can hate your husband dependent on whom you are working with. You can start to hate your husband dependent on the information you are receiving. All of a sudden, you see him as a bad person. He was not a bad person anyway. No, no, before. It is because of information that has, that has filled you. As a man thinketh. So easy. So easy. Let's finish. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was delightful to look at, yes. and a tree to be desired in order to make one wise and insightful, she took some of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband with her, and he ate. Write this thing down. The eyes were open, but the connection was lost. They stayed in the garden, but they were not connected to the garden owner. The serpent wanted them to lose the image, the likeness, and the dominion. And how does he do that? By separation. The enemy comes to squatter. The enemy comes to scatter and squander things around. He comes to disconnect because he knows that in disconnection, there is no power. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Now watch. She ate the fruit. I wish I brought the fruit. She ate the fruit. When she finished eating the fruit, serpent, why? I'm going to buy. I'm going to buy. When she finished eating, ne, she gave her husband, Adam, to eat. <laughs> Someone say he ate. Hey. Now, who has sinned here? Both. Huh? Both. Both. Is it true? How has Adam sinned? No, talk to me. How has he sinned? Because he ate. No, but the, the serpent never spoke to him. But he agreed to eat. You will always be as good as you, the person you are connected to. Hey. It's not everybody that you must spend time with. It's not everybody that is good for you. Now watch. Up until now, there was nothing wrong with Adam. Come, Adam. Stand there. There was nothing wrong with Adam. But because Adam does not want to lose Eve. So the problem with human beings is that human beings, we don't want to lose things. Hello? You always want to receive all the time, but you don't want to lose things. But sometimes you must lose things so that you can start afresh. Sometimes you must lose things so that you can discover who you are. Because the things that you're trying to keep are trying to hinder you from discovering who you are. Sometimes you must lose things so that it can afford you a chance to build who you are. Shake your neighbor's neighbor, you must lose things. Shake your neighbor's you must lose things. And how? You must lose these things. And many of you, you are crying over losing the things. And instead of losing the things, 
you are remaining connected to things that are hindering you from moving forward. They are hindering you from operating in the power of God. They are hindering you from moving, from moving into your purpose. They are hindering you from moving into the God-given dominion, into the God-given authority. The moment you go and ask Abraham, God said, leave your father's country. And Abraham took Lot. The moment he took Lot, God kept silent until he separated it with Lot and then God spoke. And who is the Lot in your life? How many lots do you have in your life? That, that the lots have become an umbrella, they've become a blockage, they've become an era of disconnection. You are still alive, but there is no connection. You are still in the garden, but there's no connection. When we worship in the garden, you can't connect. When we pray in the garden, you can't receive because you don't have connection. Lose. Lose the things. Get rid of the things. It is your responsibility to get rid of it. Watch. My God. Gave Eve. Scripture says, the husband, the wife, gave the husband to eat. Husband, I'm going to mask. Give, read, Mama. Let's go to verse 7 and 8. 7. Then the eyes of the two of them were opened. That is, their awareness increased. And they knew that they were naked. Give me New King James. Seven in New King James Version. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew they were naked. Yes. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. And they had the sound, they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Nine. Then the Lord God called for, to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. And I hid myself. I'm done. Listen to me, church. God created the animals, brought them to the man. The man named the animals, which means God had a relationship with the man. They used to communicate, they used to have an intimate relationship. That's why He could bring stuff to the man. The same God, now that you've eaten, disconnect. Now that you've eaten and you're separated, the same God when he comes, you run away from him. You hide yourself. You have even sow your own leaves, which means you have strategized your own plans to stay away from him. away from God somebody said something very powerful yesterday and says never let down never look down upon emotions he says don't come to church and pretend like you don't have emotions and, and because you have not been dealing with yourself on the inside whatsoever is happening on your inside is pulling you away from God slowly but surely it's pulling you away from God you're spending time with people that are forcing you to eat actually they're not forcing you because you don't want to lose them you eat what they eat but they're, what they're eating is good for them but for you it's making you lose connection and you're still in the garden but there's a connection error now when God comes you hear him but you have not connected to him because if you were connected to him there was no need for him to call because he, he already knows where you are this is the first time in the history of the earth where we hear God asking men, where are you? 
all the time when he brought the animals he never asked where you are because he knew where you were why because you've got connection right now he does not have your gps connection anymore when you are, when he wants to find you he needs to first ask around friends he needs to first ask around your job he needs to first ask around your money he needs to first ask around your relationship because these things have become a hindrance between you and god there's a distance between the device and the, and the source and how do you expect to make the call? And as I'm speaking right now, you want to end your life. You want to get rid of the device. The problem is not the device. The problem is that the device is no longer connected to the source that sustains it. Therefore, if there's no sustainability, the, the device becomes malfunctional. When there's malfunctional, the device cannot operate. Why? Because there's connection error. What are you eating? Who are you listening to? Where do you spend time? What are you feeding on? Because what you feed on, so you see, you see, you will never grow your risk potential if you spend time with chickens. Because chickens will say, we can only fly here. I don't go there and you will die. You have believed it because you have never tried it. Because there's connection here. Let's stand up and we close. You're here this morning. There's a problem with connection. There's a problem with connection. There's connection here. You are still in the garden, but there's a problem with connection. God is still amongst you, but you can't hear him anymore. I mean, you can hear him, but you can't follow him anymore because there's connection error. And if you're here this morning under the sound of my voice, I need to pray with you. You need to fix that connection. Because if you don't fix that connection, it won't end good. It's going to end in tears. And God has come into the garden. He's asking, Adam, Adam, where are you? Where are you? There's connection error. Couldn't king and a connection. God wants to fix the connection this morning. Let's close our eyes. If you're here this morning, say, Pastor, it's me. I've got a problem with the connection. There's a connection disturbance. I don't have signal anymore. I need to fix the connection. With all eyes closed, if it is you, I want you to move to the front. Just come to the altar this morning. Just come to the altar this morning. I need to fix this connection. Just come and lift up your hands this morning. Just come and lift up your hands this morning. You can't make decisions about your future when there's no connection. You can't. Don't. You're going to make blunders. Don't make critical de decisions when there's no connection. Come and fix your connection. Come and fix your connection. Come and fix your connection this morning. Come. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. There's no connection. There's no connection. How long will you pretend that you've got it when you don't have it? Come and fix the connection. Come and fix the connection. There's a broken soul there. It's hindering the connection. It's hindering the connection. Come and fix it. Come and fix it. Come and fix it. I'm making the last call this morning. In the last call. The people at the back there. Oh, one is still coming here. Just come, come. I want you to lift up. Can you just stretch out your right hand at the back there? Just pray over these people. Just take a minute, pray for over these people. Just pray over these people. Just pray over these people. Shalabali de Bosa Kalabaya. Libra handed in Bushia Katalabaya and Dele Bosa. Father, we bring your children unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. Here they are, Almighty God, humbling themselves before you. I pray for restoration of that connection. There's been a disconnection for a long time. Things were just a mess. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that right now, as they're in the midst of the garden, as they humble themselves, Almighty God, Almighty God, as they surrender themselves back to you, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that, oh God, may you restore that connection. May you bring back that connection. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for my sisters, oh God, that, oh God, they begin to hear you. They begin to follow you. Mighty God, they begin 
to receive visions in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I pray in the name of the Lord God Almighty that which has been disturbing the connection that is that which has been hindering the connection we pray father that oh God give them the courage give them the grace to get rid of it in Jesus mighty and precious name we pray father this morning that oh God let there be restoration of that connection almighty God that oh God the signal shall be strong as of today you shall smit them in the midnight hour they shall begin to hear you in the name of Jesus they shall begin to have communion with you in Jesus mighty and precious name we pray may it be so for them in the name of the Lord God Almighty we speak it by faith O God that it is restored in Jesus name amen and amen hallelujah come on let's give God a hallelujah the error in connection may God help us that we are able to identify that error when it happens and fix it hallelujah you see when you have not found the problem you end up breaking things that were not supposed to be broken because you are fixing the wrong places God help us in the name of Jesus amen let's give God a hand of praise and God for let's be God hallelujah before we end the service I think there's an item that Maro has to to do this morning if you could just give her a mic mama and then just remain standing and then we're gonna close in the name of Jesus hallelujah I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus amen yesterday I sent a message on the group winning women that it's our daddy's birth Father's Day so each and every person who wants to uh, to participate we would like you to give you a chance to come and bless daddy with with whatever that you have whether it's a gift whether it's money so we are giving you the opportunity to come and give to the man of God hallelujah can we come and give to the man of God are we ready you can come any amount that you have it's fine Whether you are a man, whether you are a woman, you are welcome. You can come and give. soldiering on as we continue serving you as we continue building the kingdom as we continue winning people to Christ that oh God we shall never get tired we shall never give up we shall never be weary in Jesus mighty and precious name we pray amen and amen come on let's give God a hand of praise <laughs> hallelujah ladies and gentlemen we've come to the end of the service was that a good service for somebody this morning I know it was very cold but please throughout this week discover the things that are messing up with your connection blessed be the name of the Lord hallelujah before we close the service if you're visiting us this morning all the visitors just lift up your hand if you're visiting us this morning please can you where, where, where is the 
MIVC. Please, can you just follow that lady right there into our visitor's corner? We just want to greet you. We just want to know you. There she is right now. Irene, please lift up your hand there. Just lift up your hand. If you're visiting us this morning, please just follow her right there. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, um, somebody will come there and just speak to you and greet you and tell you more about the church. Come on, let's appreciate our visitors. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We appreciate those that are visiting us. Come on, let's appreciate them. They're still walking there. They're still walking there. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's share the grace together. Father, in the name of the Lord, we release the grace of the Lord, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with each one of us now and forevermore. In your name we pray. And everybody shout and say, Amen. God richly bless you. Have yourself a Holy Ghost filled week. I'm Pastor O. And I'm signing out. Yeah.